Welcome back to the talk. The number of hospital beds in England has fallen by almost 3,000 since ministers promised 5,000 more before winter. The alarming shortage has prompted warnings that patients are being warehoused in A&E. According to senior consultants, nurses are run ragged, dealing with overrun casualty departments, with patients receiving less good care and in the wrong place. Emergency medicine doctors say they feel very let down by a lack of progress since the Prime Minister and the Health Secretary joined NHS chiefs in January to announce a recovery plan for urgent care. While 5,000 more staff beds were promised, bed numbers in major acute hospitals have fallen by 3,000 to 97 Thousand. I don't know how many times I have to talk about this. We used to have, when I was training, we had 300,000 uh, 300, beds in this country. We then dropped to 140,000. We now are hearing you've got 97,000. Hold on. When you started, there was 300,000. We had 300,000. Wow. The whole thing was there. Our population is bigger now. Correct. 10 million more. <laughs> so we've got wow. 10 million more people, but we've actually reduced the number of beds. Now, what they will say to you is, oh, well, it's because you can have another 10,000 at home and we're going to monitor you through telemetry. Well, guess what? That doesn't work very well. Also, the other problem, let me just put this really simply. If you don't have good social care, you can't get people out yeah, of hospital. Yeah, exactly. If you don't, can't get people out of hospital, you can't then get people from A&E. Yeah. If you can't get people from A&E, then the ambulance is all stuck up. And do you see where we're going? But yep. the other thing is it's not just about beds. It's about staffing levels. Yeah. So they were shutting all these wards because we simply didn't have enough staff. Now, Rishi Sunak has said, right, we're going to double the number of doctor places, which is absolutely the right thing to do. We've got to stop nicking people from abroad to, to staff our hospitals. But guess what? Everyone's surprised it's winter. It comes around every year. At the same time. At the same time. Right, at the same time. But you see, patients will suffer as a result of mm. this. And, and, and we've got to, and I've said this repeatedly, anyone who listens to Talk TV will hear me saying, we've got to depoliticise this. We have to have a 20-year strategy. Good luck with that. Good luck with I'm that. I'm just so fed up with our government over-promising and then doing nothing. They're yeah. just constantly telling us one thing and then doing literally nothing. Yeah. They've promised to ban conversion therapy and they've pushed that to the back of the closet. They are telling us there'll be more hospital beds. They're telling us that they'll halve inflation. There's going to be HS2. There's not going to be HS2. They're just constantly lying to us Do you all think the time. it's just yeah. one party, though? Because if Labour does get into power, I don't think they'll do anything either. I think the thing is about with the, the NHS, NHS... Yeah, about the because, NHS. But because for so long we've had the NHS and for so long it has done wonderful things and at the core of it, it can still do that. But I think it, it's taking a long time for people to wake up to the fact that we need to be able to actually fund the NHS differently. I mean, last week we were talking about the fact the NHS has <coughs> asked for an extra billion pounds. Just go and shake the money tree for that to happen. And yeah, the NHS probably does need more funding, but what it should do... Well, we it spend 11.7% of GDP on it. But it needs to look Doesn't within its house and reorganise yourself mm. because you're paying too many middle managers, Boom. six yeah. figures that we don't need. Uh, and what we need is more doctors and nurses. Like, it's so basic. It's so basic. Could have been me talking. Get rid of them. Could have been me talking. <laughs> get, get, I've been get, training her. <laughs> get rid of the middle managers and pay more doctors but, and nurses. But it's been very interesting listening to Wes Streeting, I think, because he actually has been... And I was going to say for a Labour politician, I actually don't mean for a Labour politician, I mean for any politician, really quite radical in what he's proposing. And it's very interesting that, of course, he, as a, the Labour spokesman and potentially Labour you know, Health Secretary, is probably the only person who can do it because he's probably the only person who has any chance of bringing the NHS staff with him because mm. they are going to trust a Labour politician. And I'm, yeah. they, you know, I'm not saying that I would trust a Labour politician more, but they would, and so would the unions. Probably the only chance of making any proper radical changes is a Labour politician. Now, of course, we know politicians promise a lot and then don't deliver a lot, yeah. so whether or not he can actually succeed in that. But I thought his speech at Labour conference was really interesting. He actually seemed to be saying some of the stuff that we've all been saying. Well, they, but, you know, you said about a political solution. You know, the trouble is, no politician in this country, probably including West Streeting, but you never know, fingers crossed, it'll be different. No politician has ever had the guts or ever looks like having the guts to confront uh, the elephant in the room, and that is that the NHS is just this massive, great basket case that needs reorganising from 
uh, top to bottom, as Afia quite rightly says, as I've said a million times, let's not pay three and a half thousand middle managers more than a hundred thousand pounds a year. Mm. Let's take that money uh, and give it to, to doctors, nurses, and ambulance drivers. Uh, you know, maybe uh, in their financial hour of need, maybe don't hire 244 new diversity officers because diversity officers don't cure patients. The problem is, I'll guarantee you this, I'll guarantee you this, or every politician, it'll be Labour as well, they'll still keep droning on, our amazing NHS, the envy <laughs> of the world. It is not amazing and it is not the envy of the world, but no politician ever has the guts to confront this awful reality, our <laughs> NHS is ruined. It's a wreck. You sound depressed, Kev. If you are 